This is Mrs. Catterman and Annabelle. Annabelle is going to open us up in prayer today. I'd love it if we can get everybody to come in and do our prayer. But Lucas is in school right now. Annabelle just finished math, so she has a break. So she's going to open us up in prayer. And Noah's still in school. So maybe you'll hear from them another time. Or maybe we'll hear from one of you. And you can mail in a prayer for us. Yes? Amen? Okay, Annabelle, thank you. God. Please bless all those people out there with COVID. Yes. Please make sure that everyone is safe and secure. Mm, amen. And you have used this crisis to lean towards you how more people are coming to believe in Jesus. Oh, praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Annabelle. Bye. Can I have a kiss? <laughs> okay. Um... So today, we're going to do the fourth chapter in the Jesus Storybook Bible by Sally Lloyd-Jones and illustrated by Jago. I do recommend it, highly recommend it for you and your family. It's a great way to begin understanding God's Word and studying it, especially if it's your first time, uh, first time reading God's Word. Because um, it's a great way to have a conversation, to start a conversation. Um, you won't get the whole thing if you, you know, don't talk about it together. So I can't stress the importance of families talking and um, reflecting on God's word together. But it is great if you just um, have a few quiet moments in the evening. The chapters are not long, but I wanted to do it with you. So because we're not able to meet together, but God gave us this way to get together. Amen? So let's do this. <laughs> and I just realized you can read. I can read it because I can see the words like this. Um, that way you don't have to look at my face the whole time. And uh, <laughs> I don't have to look at myself either. Uh, thank you. <laughs> so here we go. Let's begin. This is uh, A Giant Staircase to Heaven, which tells us the story from of the Tower of Babel from chapter 11 of the book of Genesis, which is the first book in the Old Testament. So here we go. <clears throat> Noah and his family lived in the land. And his children had children. And those children had more children. And those children had even more children. Well, you get the picture. Until there were lots of people on the earth once again. Because again, this takes place after the flood. Which was, you know, God's wrath poured out on a wicked world. But because God said that he will rescue and has a plan to rescue, he did save. He saved this family. So each and every one of us are connected not only to Adam, but also to Noah and Noah's children. <laughs> but everybody is connected to Noah in some way because his family was saved. So, amen. Think about that. We are all brothers and sisters. There is no reason for us to be divided in Christ. Amen. Um, let's keep going. Now, back then, everyone spoke the same language. So, you didn't need to learn Swahili or Japanese or anything because you could say hello to anyone and they knew what you meant. One day, everyone was talking, and they came up with an idea. Let's build ourselves a city to live in. It can be our home, and we'll be safe forever and ever. And they had another idea. Let's build a really tall tower that can reach up to heaven. So yes, they said, <clears throat> we'll say, look at us up here! And everyone, they'll look up at us. And we'll look down on them. And we'll be like, God, we'll be famous and safe and happy. And everything will be all right. So they got to work. Brick by brick, the tower grew higher and higher and higher until it soared above the city, touching the sky. They built stairs in the tower to climb to the top. It was like a giant staircase to heaven. Look! They cheered. Woo! We're the ones! See what we can do with our very own hands! They were quite pleased with themselves. 
But God wasn't pleased with them. God could see what they were doing. They were trying to live without him. But God knew that wouldn't make them happy or safe or anything. If they kept on like this, they would only destroy themselves. And God loved them too much to let that happen. So he stopped their plans. Remember, it is impossible to live a life and be filled with joy without God. Uh, all joy comes from God. It's genuine. And it's impossible for us to love the fully and eternally uh, everyone um, without his without his help because we are difficult to love we can be vengeful and we can get jealous and you have to have a proper perspective and god's word gives you that perspective he loves us so much that he doesn't want us to stay in this place where where we hurt each other okay and words can hurt and words can destroy and words have cause people to kill themselves and and you know there's so much power that we have just in words alone let alone in what we can do with our own hands so let's make sure we give god the glory every time and and consider him before we take action and before we speak um okay let's move on to the next page i want to make sure you can see one morning they went out to work. <laughs> One morning they went out as usual, but everything was different. Their words were all new and funny. You see, God had given each person a completely different language. Suddenly, no one understood what anyone else was saying. Someone would say, oh, how do you do? And the other person thought they said, how ugly are you? It wasn't funny. You could be saying something nice like, Oh, such a lovely morning. And get a punch in the nose because they thought you said, Hush up, you boring. You couldn't even say, Pardon? To check to see if you were heard right because no one understood that word either. It was easy to work together after that. As you can only imagine, people were always quarreling and fighting and getting a dreadful, in a dreadful muddle and becoming grumpier, like a muddle, like they were getting all tangled up because they didn't understand what they, what they wanted. You know, you ever work on something and you don't understand the instructions or you have to, you know, build something, maybe your Legos or you lose a page, and you don't know what to do. It, it can make things, it can make you frustrated, and that's what it was like. So becoming um, grumpier and grumpier until at last they were too cross, too angry to keep on building. They just had to stop. It is a great thing when people can work together to do something, uh, but every good and perfect gift comes from God, and when you as people, when we tend to do things for our own glory, like they were trying to do this for their own glory. And um, without God, uh, that we can hurt each other in the process. You know, you forget about the love. And and when you forget about the love, that's it's the cornerstone to who we are, you know, to that need, needing love. I mean, there are so many people who are led astray because they they don't have that you know because there is that love is lacking and so they you seek it you're gonna if you don't find it at home and or you don't find it in yourself and in, in christ and and you don't you don't realize that you have this reservoir of never-ending love coming from this source that is never ever going to dry up or is never ever going to be like uh, <laughs> you know, you you're the you're the worst. I mean, this and God cannot allow sin to God cannot be in the presence of sin, but because of Christ, you know, 
he is our pathway where even when we were in sin, he chose to die for us. But we have to accept him. We have to reach out and recognize our brokenness, you know. And when you don't see that your lack of love as a brokenness, you don't see that you lack in love or that you put other things ahead of God, you know, then it's impossible to please him. And God doesn't want us to stay in that state, you know. Um, so while it's a good thing for people to work together, it is a terrible thing when people are working together on a mission that has nothing to do with God or his love or his joy or his peace or his patience or his kindness or his goodness or his gentleness or his faithfulness. You know, like if we, if we tried or self-control, oh my gosh, like we were in a time where people don't want to show any self-control and it's, it's a dangerous that's a dangerous place to be if you don't, if you only see division everywhere you look and you can't find common ground. And oh my goodness, what a wonderful, what a wonderful place we would be in if we could all see God in everyone, you know, if we can find a way, because he's relational, you know, he wants to know you. He wants to know your heart. He wants to help you through everything you could ever face. I mean, if we can find a way to connect and to love every person, you know, how much better would this world be? How much less just, how many, you know, eh, let me read <laughs> before I get distracted, further distracted. You know how I am, kids. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Um, after that, the people scattered all over the world, which is how we ended up with so many different languages to this day. You see, God knew however high they reached, however hard they tried, people could never get back to heaven by themselves. People didn't need a staircase. They needed a rescuer because the way back to heaven wasn't a staircase. It was a person. People could never reach up to heaven. So heaven would come down to them. And one day, it would. And we know who our rescuer is. And if you don't know, I want to let you know. It is Jesus. Jesus Christ is our rescuer. And because we couldn't get ourselves into heaven, we couldn't save ourselves you know we had we've been given one commandment in the beginning you remember don't touch this tree it was one rule we broke that rule and it caused death and separation you know forever instantly i mean you didn't die instantly but they were never supposed to die you know so they, they began the countdown to the moment they would cease to exist from that moment they chose to disobey God. And then you had Ten Commandments. These things that are good things to do. Well, you're loving God and honoring God, honoring your parents, and finding a way to, so that we can be at peace with God, right? And put him first and put give him preeminence because he is our creator and maker and sustainer. That means like he keeps us. He is the reason that every day like I breathing in. I'm breathing in air God made. I am breathing in air God made with the lungs that he gave me. I am speaking with the tongue that he put in my mouth. I'm reading the word that he provided. And I, we have these things and we should... We should give God the glory because he deserves it. He's, it's, he's worthy of it. And when we see another, so that's the first uh, four commandments are about our relationship with God and being at peace with him and giving him preeminence. And then the last six commandments are about our relationship with each other. So, and Jesus addresses this in the New Testament um, where they asked, what was the most important commandment? And they were trying to trick him, and you know, and he said it's to love God and uh, with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength and all your heart. You know, you give him with everything you are, with everything in your being. Yeah, you, know, you love God, and but also to love your neighbor as you love yourself. And and if you can do those things, you're doing and you're satisfying everything that God asks you to do. But it's impossible for us to do that 
on our own strength you know we can get frustrated and and lose patience or get angry or hold grudges even with people in our own family even with you know our husbands and wives our brothers and sisters and our friends in the classroom you know like our teachers it's much better when you put you keep everything if you keep God in perspective and you remember who he is and how how big he loves you even though you're not perfect you know you can recognize the need to give people room to because they're gonna make mistakes but to also to grow and space to where instead of getting frustrated we give a word of encouragement and some guidance and if we don't know what to say then telling them who uh, directing them to someone else who who has a good answer um you know who can direct you to the right place and i mean the right place you can never go wrong when you go to the word of god and um so <laughs> anyway brothers and sisters i wanted to say i wanted to end it here at the end of the chapter and with who our rescuer is and how important it is to remember him so let's go to him again i can't bother annabelle again now because doing homework um but i wanted to let's sing a song and let's um pray okay let's start with prayer my god we thank you and praise you for loving us too much to let us stay broken to let us stay divided to let us lack in peace thank you so much for loving us so much that you said that we are chosen and that we that you did it from the beginning from before the foundation of the whole world and that you knew us before we were formed lord so you know what we're capable of and where we are in need oh lord please help us in all the areas where we need to show more patience and show more kindness and show more gentleness to show more love to have more self-control lord help us to grow to be more like jesus and to rely on your ways and not our own to trust in your guidance over our own to recognize that you you are able even when we don't understand when we can't even see a way out that you are able to guide us through everything we face everything that could ever come you are prepared and ready and willing to help us and we thank you lord god in the precious name of jesus we pray amen and i think um we should sing <laughs> we should sing um uh we'll sing a little bit of of hill song i like hill song so let's sing oh gosh I shouldn't have said that because I like so many people. <laughs> I don't want to say it like that. Like uh, we are messengers, and um, but I don't think I can sing. <laughs> uh, I don't know any words. Let me think. Um, yeah. So uh, hold me now in the hands I created the heavens. Find me now with the grace that's as deep as your scars. You pulled me from the clay. You set me on a rock. You called me by your name and made my heart whole again. So here I stand, I am surrender, I need you now. Hold my heart, I am forever, my soul 
cries out once I was broken. You love my whole heart through. Sin has no hold on me, cause your grace holds me now. 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 Healed and forgiven. Look where these chains are now. Death has no hold on me. Cause your grace holds me now. God is so good and he will keep you. And there is not a single chain of sin, of sadness, of depression, of rage that can bind you when you trust in God. Hold on, brother. Hold on, sister. I love you, and may God be with you. Bye!